Pain. This is the campfire. You can choose who you want to sit with. Or you can choose to sit next to Mothman here. Or we can choose to sit together. It's really there is a Mothman? Would you like to sit there next is a Mothman. To would you like to sit next to the Mothman, Lana? I it's not I I would like to. I am going to sit next to the Mothman. Okay, okay, we'll leave Mothman free for you then. Hell yes. You find Milo and Calculus are drinking enough wine to breed France dry, which is odd because, you know, Calculus doesn't have a mouth. To a new day with me uh, I have to say, I think that the natural cryptness, crispiness, words, okay. of the Pinot Grigio pairs nicely with the gooey processed sweetness of the toasted marshmallow. Ew. As a, as a former burst or bartender, that sounds disgusting. <laughs> You were yeah, the Syrah's smoky undertones are undoubtedly the perfect complement to the burnt weenie. Great. Yay. What are your thoughts, Cocky Lester, darling? You were a bartender? Yeah. That's cool. I took a mixology elective in college. That's that that's that's why that's why I know a lot about wines. Nice. I took a mixology elective in college. Nice! I could technically be a bartender. I'm certified as one. <laughs> nice! Cool. Cocktails are really hard to make, though. Like, the ones that don't just taste like pure alcohol, I hate those. Oh, yeah, yeah. When you find the right balance, it's it's great. From and you, get, you can get really drunk from sweet cocktails. I accidentally got tipsy during class once because I drank an entire frozen cocktail. Let's go. This was a mistake. <laughs> the way, the way to go, was, the way to graduate. <laughs> it was, it was a mistake, but it was a great mistake because that cocktail was delicious. <laughs> yeah, there, there are no, there, are, there's no mistake if it was delicious, dude. Yeah, exactly. Plus, one of my classmates bought me mozzarella sticks afterwards, so win-win. Yay! Nice. I think that a nice box of red wine is exactly what I need to relax after an exhausting PTA meeting and a thoroughly unsatisfying lovemaking session with my husband, Craig. <laughs> Wait, he has a husband? What on earth are you talking about? Oh, sorry. Was my meeting not clear enough? Perhaps this minion meme will suffice to explain my thoughts. Look here, it says, I wine because my kids wine. What a clever little pun. I... Where are you getting your sommelier information from? I don't think it's terribly credible source. Sigh, I fear you are right, friend Milo, but I have no taste buds, and so I have resorted to Google searching I love wine in, in order to formulate my critique. But I dearly wish to participate somehow. It seems that the bitter tastes of wine and divorce are integral to the organic experience. The more, the, the more this dude talks, the more I think of like, if you have sex with him, then at the end he doesn't come, but he just tases you. <laughs> that sounds about right. Or he gives you a formal review. Just, or just, he gives you a formal review, yeah. Just, just fucking, just, just fucking... It gets you electrocuted. Hmm, what a fast- I give you four stars on Yelp. <laughs> out of what? Four out Five. of- Five. Okay, good. Hmm, what a fascinating aesthetic question. Truly, how can a wholesome computer boy enjoy wine tasting? I don't know. Also, these ones for the campfire don't require stats. It's just who you want to go for. Yeah. Wine tasting Let's is- go. Let's see, uh... I think the first one is for Milo, right? Yeah, that does sound right. Okay. Wine tasting isn't about taste, it's about the drama. How does the wine make you reflect on the fleeting, flavorful joys of life? That's very true. A brilliant point, Len. It's true, wine is a backdrop for so many beautiful life events. And life-ending events. I've witnessed countless lovers confessing their feelings over Meduck. I... Why? Meduck, yeah, Meduck. Friends toasting their good fortune with a nice pre dinner racing. <laughs> racing, whatever. It's okay. And so many unforgettable kings poisoned with a bit of Belladonna slipped in their port. Such a flair for the dramatic. Yes, Calculester, darling. This is the heart of the matter. It's not about the wine's flavor, it's about the feelings that makes you feel. Like inspired or 
poisoned. Oh, I love that feeling. That's my favorite feeling. Don't you just love feeling poisoned? <laughs> oh, totally. That's yep. Lovely. Yep. Okay. Right up there with stabbed. <laughs> okay, I feel confused. Good, good. Here's this Merlot. It's an old favorite of mine. Pairs perfectly with perplexity. Oh, okay. I think I understand. Or rather, I don't understand. But perhaps that is the objective. Every moment is beautiful. Hey, my darling. And for you, Len, I have a delightful the delightful Prosecco. It's bubbly and perceptive, just like you. That's true. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Mila winks at you. You hope it's flirtatious, not because they poisoned your wine. Guess you'll find out in a few minutes. <laughs> Give me the demons! I hope no one can hear my dog barking in the background. I could, but it's okay. Damn it's it. fine. Damn it, Miranda! <laughs> okay. Miranda! I'll sh I'll send you a picture of her later. She's baby. <laughs> yeah, send me the doggy. I will. You're roasting a s'more harder than you were roasted at the time you wore neon Crocs to school when you. I would never. When you hear what sounds like an in what intense negotiations, you go investigate because you're a nosy bitch. That is true. Fine. Only one week. And I'll give you a portion of the eighth circle if you do my logic for this week. Do I get the dukedom on it? Only if you fold it out. And if I don't fold? Land, but no dukedom. What if I Mari folds? The clothes can be more easily stolen this stored in this tight camp space. He's the hell dukedom and a crown. Big crown or a little crown? Low crown. Tiara? Mm -hmm. Circle. Aw, those are actually some pretty cute for once not threatening negotiations. But you bet you can help one of them get an even sweeter deal. Hmm. This is where I decide. Uh... <laughs> I mean, you've, been, you've already been going for Dahlia. Might as well keep going for Yeah, it. might as well continue. I think the, uh, the first yeah. one? Yeah, the They're first one. Deep. Hell, 300 years in the future, a world-weary traveler escapes a cold winter's night by ducking into an otherwise empty tavern. Look at three pieces of gold procure. A thirsty wanderer? What's happening? I don't know. Uh, How much am could maybe the traveler get from the dude of... Taraxar, procure this knife. I've been traveling a while, I could use a drink. Ah, yes, the Duke Dom of <gasps> She's pretty! Ah, yes, I've heard of such a place. Was it not at once two dukedoms? Yeah, it's a long story. Yes, Taraxar and Drogadar. But then a deal was brokered between two young, powerful demons for their unifications. Before they were bitter trade rivals. Karazoshash. What are these words? <laughs> it's okay, just do your best. Boats <laughs> of the finest vault of cloth and all of hell, made with the ancient techniques they would never share. Meanwhile, Drogadar was home to the finest scientists hell had ever seen. To create potions that can remove any sink from any surface. Lord Empress Dahlia the First. Empress Dahlia the First displayed her intellect and diplomacy by, un uniting. by uniting the two into one. Yes, that, that is what uniting means. Good job, Phoenix. Yes. <laughs> Shut. No. <laughs> thus proving that a unification between dukedoms was the most effective move for all. It is now a prosperous place. Tell me more tales, traveler. And perhaps I'll tell you a few of mine. Meanwhile, back in the present. Mm -hmm. Ugh, fine, whatever. You can have two dukedoms. Nice! I got two dukedoms! Now dukedoms kiss! Dahlia Mime's making two du dukedoms kiss. It's so cute. Maybe you'll get to do that with her someday. Love yeah, buff lady! Okay, um... Hi, Anana! Yeah. I'm glad you're here! I was busy silently judging all of your campmates, but now I can judge them out loud with you. <laughs> Take Joy, for example. She's a great hero and stuff, but what's up with her whole anti-social attitude? Do you think she's hiding anything? Do you know anything particularly juicy about someone, Lana? I must know. 
Whoa, jeez. Okay, it looks like this moth really needs some juicy gossip in his life. Better get to making some up. Okay, so you can choose, uh... you can choose one of us to affect with your gossip skills, or you can choose yourself. Uh, 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 I'll choose myself. Okay. Choose one. Uh... These are great! Nitty Gordy Denny! Denny DeVito Stalker Group, let's go! Choose one. Uh... <laughs> Obscure Shrek trivia knowledge. Oh, well, yeah. Type in a toy that's totally 90s. A toy that- hold on. A toy that's totally 90s. Yeah, what's a 90s? Medgebox. Oh, Medgebox. Like that? No, no, no! Matchbox! Like, oh. the little cars! Like that? Yes! I don't know why it happened. Hell yeah. Oh my gosh, this is even juicier than I anticipated! Thanks for trusting this information with me, Lana. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to betray that trust by telling everyone what you said. That's so bad. <laughs> 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 your fellow campers are all hungry for that hot gauze, and soon you hear your rumors spreading all over the place. Hey, it's Papyrus! <laughs> but neon. Oh, it's D and D papyrus. <laughs> Let's go. Do I dare? Do I dare do the voice? Yes. Now you have to. Hey, have you heard about Lana? Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, listen to this because you may not know her as well as you thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Apparently, last year Lana was boarding a flight on the official Danny DeVito soccer group business. When she was stopped by the TSA! Oh, actually. The TSA agent opened Lana's suitcase and realized that she was trying to smuggle a bag of nose candy hidden in a matchbox car into the flight! How? I would never also, lies. Also, slender. Also, how? Aren't, weren't those things tiny? <laughs> yeah. Oddly enough, Lana tried to convince the TSA agent to let her go by showing off her obscure Shrek trivia knowledge. Fortunately, it was enough to convince the TSA agent to allow her to board the flight with her sweet, sweet matchbox car. It's pretty mind-blowing, huh? And I'd keep this info in mind next time you see Lana out and about. Yeah, Lana. Oh my god. How can you betray me, Papyrus, like this? I'm gonna tell you on Sans. <laughs> yeah, Lana, make sure you're careful of Lana next time you're walking around. <laughs> Yeah. Your gossiping skills totally cause you to gain too fun. Nice. That's 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 meta. All right. All right. Uh, what will it be? The weekend is here, and you have no money, which means it's time to hit up Juan for some free booze. Hello, welcome back. Do you want another free drink? Yeah, I thought so. I get for you. I'm a generous little kitty. Take what you want. So in this one, we get to choose fun-looking cocktails. Ooh, I I know what I want. I want the universe one, so don't choose that one. Which one? This one? Yeah, I want that one. Alright. Um, well, that one's cool. Let's see what else. Gay. Gay. Choose the gay. No. The gay chose you too. I want this one. Sweet! Alright, Phoenix. Let's see. <laughs> Bone hurting juice. <laughs> Definitely not that, and also not Polly's toilet line. Uh, what's on the second page? Oh, give me the literal sex on the beach. Yeah, yes. Let's find out what these are. Phoenix, you got a sex on the beach. Ah, a sex on the beach. I brought this drink to the next level, as you can see. Give it a try, I assure you, it'll be a fun ride. Yeah, you got more fun. I got a hot shot. A hot shot! I managed to turn a demonic blood pack into a spicy drink. You drink this one with a friend, okay? Each one of you observes the strongest stat of the other one. Oh, what is Oh. Wait, what? What does that mean? It takes your uh, charm away? I have away? an 11, so I'm probably the best. Oh. Wow. Oh, interesting. So now we each have zero in something and a big in something else. Fun. Whoa! 
Okay. Lana, you cosmopolitan. Know the Cosmopolitan received its name because it disrupts the very core of the cosmos. Thanks to it, any stat effect is now doubled for you, for better or for worse. Oh yeah, baby! Still hard to believe you drank that. Good luck, I guess. Let's trade places. Let's actually see. To if... the random. Will something change? Hey! Yeah! Yes. Something, finally! Something finally changed. It's a goddamn miracle. Dawn of the second day. Today will be a campastic day. What do I need? I uh, need it. Campastic day. <laughs> what, what do you need, Phoenix? I do need smarts. Oh, we haven't been to either of these two places. Yeah. What are those? Uh, creativity they and boldness. They are creativity or boldness. Ah, uh, sure. Let's go to the haunted house. I do. In the haunted manner, a voice whispers from the walls in a frightening voice. Phoenix, you can't escape your fate. You'll soon gain boldness, but after that, something weird will happen to you. It could be great, or terrible. You don't want something potentially terrible happening to you. You stay put to be sure you don't get extra boldness for the voice's prediction. Look at you trying to defy destiny itself. That takes some bravery. Here, here take some boldness. Phoenix! Hi! What are you doing? Not important. It's time to kill Winter! I tracked her down. Her name is Bruma and she lives in Alaska in a place made of ice and crude oil. What? Let's go. Aw, poor winter. Like winter. You hesitate for a moment because Alaska sucks, but Dahlia triggers a travel montage before you can object. One plane, one bus, and one tandem bike uh, ride later, you... No, that's a Tauntaun. That's from Star Wars. Yep. Anyway, you stand before the palace of the Herald of Winter. The Portcullis? Yep, it's part of the castle. I see. Opens with a tremendous grating noise. Who dares approach my sanctum? But bellows the herald, who looks like Elsa from Frozen, but wearing a Christmas sweater and blazoned with the words, "This is not copyright infringement." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is I, Dahlia Aquino, and I have come on behalf of the Herald of Summer to melt you into fluid. Foolish mortal, says Elsa, I mean Bruma, you cannot defeat the mighty winter. It is by far the superior season. What? Impossible. Summer has all the best things. Revealing swimsuits, sweating profusely, the Summer Olympics. Indeed, says Bruma, but winter has bitter cold, not being able to go outside, and the Winter Olympics. Aww. Curses! She's right! Damn those figure skaters in their sexy ice bikinis! Yeah. Yes! You cannot stand against me, smiles Bruma. Now run along. I have lunch with Sarah Palin in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, you can't give up so easily. Surely there must be a way to ruin Winter and defeat its herald. Wait, you've got it! Socks! Give her socks! Oh, definitely. A <laughs> truly fiendish plan. Here, use my emergency socks. You ask her why she carries around a pair of emergency socks. They're endlessly useful! You can fill them with quarters and use it as a blackjack, or turn it into a sock puppet to keep yourself company while stranded on a deserted island. And if you ever find yourself without socks to wear, you can use an emergency sock as a ski mask and rob a sock store! But of she course, definitely has ADHD. 100%. Definitely. <laughs> but of course, the most powerful use of all is to give them as a gift to your enemy, thus totally demoralizing them because they were expecting something better. Quick, put them in an elaborately wrapped box and affix a thoughtful note. That'll show her. You do as instructed and quickly <laughs> present Bruma with the gift. What's this? She says. A present? For me? Just a moment ago we were about to fight. But I'm so delighted I've forgotten all about that. Let's see what's inside, shall we? Oh my. It's socks? What the hell, you guys? I knew I wanted a bathtub. You knew I wanted a bathtub made of crystal. You knew! Damn, I, I don't even wear socks. I wear leggings. Socks are totally incompatible with my character design. It's not even Christmas, and you ruined Christmas. You ruined it so bad, there's never going to be Christmas again. I quit. Bruma melts, wow. Bruma melts into a very annoyed liquid before your eyes. You've done it. Winter is defeated. All the snow in Alaska melts, and all the reindeer fucking die. Serves them right. <laughs> reindeer suck. <laughs> no! Poor reindeer! Great work, Phoenix. Maybe it's just a sudden climate change, but I feel myself warming up to you. It's definitely the climate change. Alaska is ruined, but you gain two boldness and one creativity, so it all evens out. <laughs> okay. Wow, what the fuck just happened? Well, okay, so I need, um, you need can I, can I see? You, you need many smarts. Yeah, you yeah. have zero smarts you have right none, now. None of them. Oh, I'm the second one. Yeah, so I need smarts, yeah. 
Smirked. Aww. Ah, I'm so cute! That's a lovely outfit. That day you go searching through the woods for edible wildflowers to make a delicious wildflower soup. You heard that some well-known flowers like lilies and tulips are actually poisonous. Really? You decide to find out which flowers are bad by eating them all. A few hours later, you have vomited up all the contents of your stomach and have a con comprehensive list of which flowers not to put in the soup next time. Nice. You gain two smarts. Nice. Wildflower soup forever! It's a beautiful day at Camp Spooky, and Calculus is taking the opportunity to show off his succulents. You see, friend Lana, I did not want my succulents to feel left out of the camp spirit, so I've been making each of them tiny Camp Spooky appropriate outfits. Each one will be receiving a tiny scout sash with even tinier scout badges and individual bathing suits they can wear while I spray them with mist. Calculus. That's very cute. Calculus is so adorable when he talks about his plans. You can't help but stare lovingly into his face as he speaks. Snakes. Spider. Well, 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 why am I not surprised? Yet another camper staring intently at a screen instead of enjoying the great outdoors. Man, this screen is attached to a person. Yep. <laughs> Ma'am, the screen is a person. Ma'am, the screen is a person. <laughs> Perhaps Spooky isn't about using electronics. It's about engaging in classic activities like scouting and swimming and doing manual labor for the benefit of the cat. And yet here you all are on your phones. You explain that Calculuster is not, in fact, a phone, but rather a sentient being and, in fact, a fellow camper under her charge. Friend Lana is right, friend camp director Miss Weaving. You and I have interacted multiple times. So what students and their phones all may say to try to justify their technology addiction and neglect their real-world responsibility? You have left me with no choice. I'm afraid I'm going to have to confiscate all screens from you until you're kicked at this- No! Is she- is she gonna take his hand? Uh, I hope not. Quick as a flash, camp director Miss Living grabs calculus and starts putting him in her pocket? Help! Help! I'm being kidnapped! Not the R2-D2 scream. <laughs> no, you're not. You're being confiscated. There's a huge difference. It has to do with whether or not <laughs> something happened. Rescue me, friend Lana! Rescue me from friend camp director Miss Weaving, who is not being a good friend at all right now! You can't let Calculus be kidnapped, computer napped, confiscated, whatever. He can't be taken away. You need to find a way to convince camp director Miss Weaving that your relationship with Calculus is far from an unhealthy addiction. Given your history of spending all your time and energy trying to impress one classmate with no regard for school or extracurriculars, this may not be true, but you still need to convince her. Uh, okay, um... <laughs> um... I guess the top one. Yay. Yay! You pull out your cell phone and access your old Tumblr. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I actually never had the Tumblr. You're one of the lucky ones. <laughs> Hell yeah. And you have ten, but you specifically accessed the Garfield one. What? What is this? Are you willingly forfeiting other technology because you've seen the error of your ways? No, you explain. You had already seen the error of your ways years ago. Now this is <laughs> your relationship with Calculus is healthy compared to what you used to be into. Yep. This, this appears to be a leak to a 40-page document explaining your belief that Garfield was murdered ten years ago in a place with a look-alike cat. It's true. What about hazard this that this is that this new cat is actually allergic to lasagna? And all recent depictions of lasagna are clearly disguised in meatloaf it is distinguishable from lasagna. This is a vast spiraling multicolored chart claiming to offer an ex Applicable proof that Garfield and Naruto take place in the same universe. <laughs> what? What the fuck is this game? This one is simply entitled Hidden Symbology in Garfield. Is the innocent comic strip the way of the powerful cult known as the Garfield Orange Lounge secretly communicates with its adepts worldwide to fulfill their agenda of erasing Monday from all calendars? 
Very well, Cabramana. I think you have proven your point. These are clearly the ramblings of an incredibly disturbed mind. Okay, we Thank knew, you. It's okay, we knew that already. We knew yep. Does yep. this mean that I am unconfiscated again, friend of Camp Director Miss Weaving? Indeed. Compared to even one sentence of these ravings, Lara's relationship with your screen seems downright wholesome. Actually, come to think of it, compared to most of the things that happen around here, anything involving Mr. Hewitt Picard seems downright wholesome. What to do you see to it that you keep your screen time limited on other devices at the very least? And make sure the two of you spend plenty of time with nature. Oh, we, we will, Camp Director Miss Weaving. We were actually engaging in caring for plants when you first interrupted and pulled focus from us spending time with nature. Hmm. As you were, then. What an exciting and scary adventure we just had. <sighs> I believe I'll make something new for my dear plants so that we can all celebrate. Success. Perhaps I will craft some tiny cell phones, then take those cell phones away and give my plants some plants so they can learn to value nature over technology. Wow. You're glad calculus to learn the lesson because you haven't changed at all, except for getting four charm and two fun. Yeah! I need, I need boldness, but you took the boldness, so... Uh... I guess I'll get some creativity? What is happening? Science! <laughs> that day in Monster Scouts, you learned to make your own, very own clothes in the wild. Someone suggests a fashion show, so afterwards you all put on your outfits and show them off. If you'd known that would have been a result, you probably would have made something other than leaf and stick thong and vine woven nipple tassels. You <laughs> should say, nobody will be forgetting your performance anytime soon. You gain two creativity. Oh well. Later you're wandering through camp looking for Mila. Your therapist said you can spend some time contemplating mortality, so hanging out with the Reaper counts, right? Mm. This- this game oh, just hey. does not- does not give you a break. It really doesn't. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to tap, eh, but I've got a gig. Actually, why don't you come along? It's a lovely day for a reaping, and you get the privilege of walking, watching me weather. Oh, hell yeah. Watching Milo lead a soul into the afterlife? That's gotta count as emotional reflection. You follow Milo to a rotting corpse where the soul Hello, awaits. Darling. Hello, little soul. I'm Death, but you can call me Milo. Here's the bad news. You're, like, totally dead. Dead. Oh, the please stop. Is... <laughs> but the good news is, I'm going to take you to the afterlife, so let's go. You! Death! You've come for me, but first, you must listen to my tale. Tis a tale of woe, of strife, of courtly ambitions. For I, I was the Grand Master to the Murking. Mm. Ugh, another dead person with a tale. They always want to tell you a tale. People just don't respect a reaper's time nowadays, you know? Ugh. Go ahead, I suppose. I served the venerable Mer King as Grand Master. Two days ago, the Mer King was attacked in his sleep. He survived but became obsessed with the idea that the attack had been a coup. He killed me in his paranoia. But I saw the attack with my own eyes. The Mer King was not the victim of a coup d'etat, but was attacked by a vicious beast with the strength of 100 warriors. The beast. It was a doggish thing, and covered in thickest fur, and it pissed all over the king's chambers. The room was positively drenched. Strangely enough, the beast seemed to rather enjoying itself, barking and laughing, and I heard tell that it was goaded by a mysterious specter. Well, that's another mystery, and to this day I wonder if- Wait, are you even listening to me? The story is gripping, you should be paying attention! Oh, of course I wasn't listening. That story was way beyond my attention span. I was trying to figure out why I can't download your soul into my soul transporter app. Hmm. That's weird. What if I change this setting? Oh no. Oh god no. This better not be what I think it is. Hey, Grand Maester. By any chance, did you ever trade your soul to a demon? Trade my soul to a demon? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I don't recall. I might have. It sounds like something I would do, but I can't recall the demon. <laughs> that soul belongs to me, baby! Get ready for an eternity of Dahlia! Four years ago, I made a deal with that guy. He swore that I could have a soul me dive at a low price of four alf themed pogs. You know, pogs. <laughs> Remember pogs, you guys? Oh! <laughs> yes, it's all coming back to me now. Great to see you again, Dahlia. I forgot to change away my soul, but I never forgot those bitching alf pogs. They were so sweet. 
Bah, such nice pogs. I was entertained by them for like four weeks. Then the next trend came and I forgot about them. But it was probably <laughs> worth training my soul. OMG. The shenanigans. I can barely cope. Dahlia, I need you to relinquish this soul so I can take it to the afterlife. I refuse to let this affect my rating. Sorry, Milo. I traded four whole pogs for that soul. I'm not giving it up unless you give me something better. I'm making a soul army and he's giving me my first soldier. Shit, looks like- Oh yeah, let's go. It looks like Milo needs to wrestle this soul from Dahlia's demonic grip, bargain with Dahlia, and get the sexy reaper the recently deceased soul that they deserve. Okay, the second one is definitely boldness, and I don't have enough for that. Oh, thank god. <laughs> An entire soul album? Whoa! That's gotta contain like 30 or 40 souls at least! Let me see it! You whip out one of the 40 Aretha Franklin CDs that you literally Hell always yeah. carry around with you. You're, you grab your fave album, Who's Zoom and Who, and hand it over to Dahlia. Hmm. Whoa, it's heavy. I can really feel all the souls inside. But wait, who's Aretha Franklin? Some sort of soul harvester? Uh, <laughs> yeah. She's the legendary soul harvester among reapers. That's why everyone calls her the Queen of Soul. Wait, the Queen of Soul? Shouldn't it be the Queen of Souls if she harvested a ton of souls? Oh, wait, I think I get it. She probably just harvested one huge, powerful soul, right? Sure, yeah, definitely. You know how souls are. They vary in size and power and combine and recombine. It's all a mess, but... But Aretha really whipped them into shape. That totally makes sense! In that case, I'm not gonna stick with one measly loser soul and I can have this whole album by the Queen of Soul herself. Let's trade. Long live Aretha! Dahlia hands over the Grand Meister's soul. Milo pops it in their... Yves Saint Laurent soul reaping tote, and you. Yves Saint Laurent. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. And you two enjoy a nice stroll while leading the souls to the afterlife. Since you helped them finish this gig so quickly, you two take the extra time to sit on a cliff and hold hands. It's romantic AF. Life. It's so beautiful. Mm, this atmosphere. This calm, quiet, beautiful. I can feel myself blooming, you know. I'm happy as a peony in spring, and this sunset is particularly emotional today. We should do a collab. Thanks for your help with the gig, Len. I don't know what I would have done if Dahlia had kept that soul. But you were right there when I needed you, weren't you? You slowly pull out your Walkman and lean in for the ultimate romantic move, sharing earbuds with your crush! Mila hesitates, but accepts the left earbud. That's the horniest one! <laughs> what? I don't know. Wow, she really was the Queen of Soul, huh? I'm just happy that you always carry the all of these Aretha Franklin albums around with you. They really come in handy. You spend the rest of the afternoon listening to music with Milo. It's, tra it's tranquil and rejuvenating. Plus, Aretha's high notes are so powerful they give you two charm and one fun. Hell yeah. Let's trade places. Random. Nothing fucking changed. Nothing changed. <laughs> it's amazing. And nothing of value was lost. <laughs> nothing of value was lost or gained. Or gained. <sighs> um. It's our last day, so make it count. Make it, make it count. Do I go for the smarts? I should probably go for the smarts. Okay. That day you go on a hiking trip with a bunch of random campers. You live some weird adventures and share personal stories and secrets. You don't know their names, they don't seem to have their own character models, but they reveal to you they're part of a different game, a survival resource managing one. It turns out they cannot perceive your character model. You go to the same camp, you're part, you're part of different games. It is deeply strange and makes you fuck so much by your own existence that you gain two smarts out of it. Existential crisis! Hell <laughs> oh, yeah. They apparently gain 10 berries and 2 stamina, whatever that means. Ooh. Hi, quick question. Does it count as kidnapping if I'm abducting you so that you can help me do a thing you already agreed to help with? Never mind, you can nah. answer later. Right now, I need to knock you out and drag you to Portland, Oregon. No. Wow. Before you can say I would have come with you willingly, you're waking up with a bump on your head, stuffed inside a suitcase on the PDX baggage ca carousel. Great, Oof. there you are. Let's go. Send and defeat the Herald of Autumn. Their name is Autumn, and they live in a giant pumpkin. Dahlia's intelligence turns out to be wrong. The Herald's name is Autumn, all right, but they live in a tasteful craftsman bungalow. They are a giant pumpkin. 
Hey, friends. Says Autumn, sitting calmly on their porch with a steaming mug of tea. You to defeat me on behalf of the Herald of Summer, etc., etc. That's right. Although I have to say I'm a little surprised that Fall is the final boss of this thing. I'm not surprised that you're surprised. Says Autumn, chill lo-fi music play playing se seemingly out of nowhere. Every quirky person thinks they're the only one who likes Fall. The thing is... Autumn says as they adjust their cozy scarf. Everybody in the entire world thinks of themselves as quirky. Fall is the most popular season by far, and it will be forever. Hell yeah. Not if I have anything to say about it, and I do. What I have to say about it is no. Talk is cheap, honey. Says Autumn. Their voice makes you want to fall into a pile of crisp, colorful leaves. How do you actually plan to defeat me? Well, uh, I'm gonna punch you real hard. Mmm, no. Says Autumn after thinking about it for a second. Punching really isn't the vibe right now. What do you mean? Punching is always the vibe. Watch, I'll show you. Hey! I I can't do it. The vibe is too chill. It's like trying to punch my way out of a warm quilt. Oh no. With Dahlia's greatest weapon out of commission, how will you ever defeat Autumn? Well, you've got two, one or two ideas. Pumpkin spice flavored poison. Yeah, pumpkin spice poison. Let's go. Oh. Damn it. Sorry. <laughs> that sound. It sounded good. Yeah, fucked it up at it the did. very last opportunity. Yeah. Autumn takes one look at your vial of pumpkin spice poison and rolls their jack o' lantern eyes. Please. Oh, they sigh. You're not going to get me to drink something you just openly described as poison. But it's not poison, it's pumpkin spice poison. <laughs> That's even worse. Says Autumn. I mean, I'm a pumpkin myself, that would be cannibal. <gasps> but that's... and that's bad? Sorry, I'm from hell, I sometimes forget which things are atrocities. <laughs> I mean, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Says Autumn. Definitely bad. I mean... Would either of you drink equal spice poison? I mean, yes. Dahlia probably would. Autumn produces a steamy draught of people uh, of people spice poison from their loose fitting sweater. It's a fashionable and eco friendly poison thermos. Uh, of course not. It's poison. It's not poison. Says Autumn. It's people spice poison. And listen to what the teens are saying about it online. Taste was my least favorite thing about poison. Now this drink truly really speaks to me. My mom told me I shouldn't jump off the cliff if my friend if my friends did. But she did nothing about drinking poison. Hashtag a latte to literally die for. You're insane if you think the options of a bunch of teens opinions of a bunch of teens are gonna make us Felix, did you, why did you just chug the thermos full of poison? You can <laughs> You can't help it! The FOMO is just too strong! <laughs> Hello, darling. Does someone just stupidly drink poison here? I got a notification to pick up a soul at his address. Ah, uh, it's just you. Uh, for the last time, Phoenix, I am not going to reap your soul for free just so we can go to the same camp. Figure this out on your own. I have to go capitalize on this hot new people's spice poison trend. I can't believe you let Autumn defeat you with your own ruse, Phoenix. We'll never defeat them now. It's all your fault. I'm gonna take my frustration out of a small country via warfare. Thanks for nothing, poison. Oh no! I'm sorry! <laughs> on the it's bright fine. On the bright side, Mila refusing to reap your soul means you don't die. On the downside, everything else. My turn? Oh no! Okay, what do I need? smarts but that's taken so uh, uh, creativity or fun yeah I'm gonna go for fun fun good that day you d go diving to see us at the bottom of the lake you find a comic book you pick it up but it's so interesting you stay there reading it this is bad since you cannot hold your breath indefinitely you rush to the surface but before getting there you drown a little and some lake water gets into your mouth gross you saw some weird stuff that was in the lake water, like a whole jellyfish and too fun? What was that doing there? <laughs> You've been spending a lot of time with calculus lately, so when you ask if you want to meet up for some standard organic activities, you're thrilled! It's his most romantic invitation yet! 
Greetings, friend Lana. Thank you so much for joining me for these activities. I'm 98.46% certain you will enjoy them. First, oh. I propose that we watch several hours of horny anime while online comparison shopping for vacuum cleaners. You know what? You spoke oh, my yeah. language. Let's go. After that, we can track down some of our campmates and shamelessly attempt to integrate ourselves to the Milwaukee hijinks. <laughs> and to round out the evening, we can finish up by leaving positive reviews of Monster Pump 2 Monster Camp on Steam. Wow, those are literally all your favorite things to do. How did he know? It is no big mystery, friend. I simply downloaded and perused your entire search history. Oh, never mind, oh, no. stalker. <laughs> oh, Many no. of my less scrum scrumpulous brethren use this technique for market purposes, marketing purposes, but I've chosen to use my power for good by algorithmically identifying all of your favorite activities. Speaking of which, I wanted to do the cake thing as well, but had trouble finding a large enough horse. What? 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 Wow, that's super creepy, but like in a totally cute way that you absolutely love. Calculator leaves you around for the rest of the afternoon, and each activity he suggests is even more enjoyable than the last. It seems like reducing a complex person down to a constellation of online data is not only possible, but super fun and deeply unethical. Two of your favorite things. <laughs> that, wow. That night, though, as you lie in your tent reminiscing about the day's adventures, a thought occurs to you. If Calculus starts reading your entire search history, that gives you a great low-key way to send signal your attraction to him. You leap out of bed, energized by your new idea. It's time to go online for romance reasons. But what combination of searches will unlock Calculus's cold metal heart? The answer might surprise you. Robot uh, porn! Uh, robot uh, porn! You have so much boldness, Lana. You could do robot porn. <laughs> uh, uh, but I don't know if that's going to be like... If it's going to, you know, actually make him feel things. I have no idea. Uh, it's pretty fucking bold. Fuck it, let's go. Robot porn! I was wrong, it's not bold, it was fun, but you still have a lot of that, so yeah. Hell yeah, finally, an excuse to really dig into the wealth of robot porn the internet has to offer. You start with some pretty, <laughs> sta you start with some pretty standard human on robot fare, but the robot is really just wrapped in tinfoil. You need the real shit. Oh my god. Twelve hours later, you're on the dark web trading bitcoins for mp4s. Your mind is awash in images- FUCK BITCOINS! That's not true! I would never do that! Oh my god. Uh, you never knew printer servos were so versatile or so girthy. You could have gone your whole life without knowing- Oh my fucking god. This is for calculus, though. You press on. By morning, you're pretty sure you've seen every possible probe slash orifice combination and learn how to say yes, daddy, in hexadecimal. You're uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you're Why am I not surprised that I got this path? It's so, it's so typical. Oh my fucking god. It seems on brand. Wow. Uh, you, you're in, you're in my server. You know that this hundred percently fits. I am in your server. Oh uh, no. But you're also filled with determination. You leave your tent and Cal and see what effect your search history has had. You find him hovering anxiously right outside your tent. Hello, Lana. Since I know exactly where you sleep, I thought this would be a good place to find you. I reviewed your search history for the night prior, and my reaction has been somewhat complex. On the one hand, I am quite flattered to know how deeply attracted you are to individuals with a robotic persuasion. On the other hand, I am not sure I am as sexually adventurous as the robots in those videos. I don't even have most of those ports. Would it be alright if we took it slow for a while? I like you very much. I simply need some more time to process things. Oh! Oh, thank god. You're pretty sure your body wouldn't survive half the maneuvers you just witnessed. You take Cal by his cold middle hand and head off to pick flowers in the forest. Oh, let's go! Cal won't let you actually pluck the flowers because it would be too cruel, but he does make a list of his favorite ones and emails to you emails that he was a digital bouquet. You, oh. you gained four fun and two smarts. Let's go! I wanted fun, so let's go. While you're exploring the haunted manor, you hear a voice calling your name. It comes from under the bed. Two blood red eyes stare at you from the inky darkness under the bed. A voice that sounds older than time whispers, Do you want to gain some boldness, Len? You say yes, yes, because you actually do want that. Okay, here you go. Whatever this thing is, it gives you two boldness. What a nice under the bed thing. <laughs> Later, you're enjoying the sunset alongside Milo, eating delicious artisan sandwiches and listening to music together. It is not often that Camp Spooky is so enjoyable. Hashtag blessed. Oh, Len. Isn't this nice? 
It's really our hashtag blessed to be able to sit back and enjoy life's sensual pleasures so deeply and without stress. I often find that people spend their time rushing from one task to the next. Run the day with it. I can speak. Can you? Sometimes. Sometimes. Never taking the time to stop and smell the word. Paul Levesque. Oh, that. You're welcome. <laughs> Which is such a waste. I mean, life is a bit like the sandwich. No, stay with me. I'm going somewhere good with this. Milo begins slowly building themselves a new sandwich, staring at it starry-eyed like it's going to reveal the secrets of the universe. Now, the bread of the sandwich is a bit like the essential tasks of life. They are important, sure. Without bread, you wouldn't have a sandwich. Just a pile of veggies and meats. However, the meat, or vegetarian alternative, live your best life, of the sandwich is like your soul. It's the most important part of your life. Life is a gift. And the toppings, the cheese, the portobello mushrooms, the garlic aioli, those are life's sensual pleasures. They complement the soul and the sandwich would be woefully bland without them. And a sandwich as beautiful and unique as this doesn't deserve to be eaten in just a few bites. You need to savor it, enjoy it, maybe throw a pic of it on your so- sorry for clout. Every moment is beautiful. Look, what I'm saying is, I wish we could forget about setting goals and living by them all the time. Whatever happened to just letting life happen and immersing yourself in it? Oh, wow, okay, you've got to try the sandwich, Len. Not only is it a menacing metaphor for my constant pursuit of sensual pleasures, but it's delicious as well. As I hell. I, I, I would, but I don't like mushrooms. <laughs> Everything else in that Maybe. sandwich sounds fantastic, but I don't like mushrooms. <sighs> Holy shit, the sandwich is incredible, but you're sure you can impress Mila with something better than a Reuben? It's clear that they love life's sensual pleasures, but what, is, what pleasure would they love most of all? <laughs> yes! Yes! Let's think, go! I don't think I have enough boldness or charm for that. Alright, then just go for the wholesome one. Okay. Hey, that's an incredible- hey. oh, that's you. That's me. Sorry. Yeah, that's an incredible idea. And an incredible metaphor. It's so poetic and in a way so deeply accurate. Perhaps we could try it together, then, so that we may be mutually enlightened. Oh, I'm so excited. Who knows? This could turn out sexy in a weird way. You and Mila sit across from each other and they start leading you in the exercise. Now relax. Take a deep breath. In through the nose, out the mouth. Now do it again. Envision the air you breathe as warm, savory, slightly buttery, like the world's best slice of aged brie. And envision the air you breathe out as dark, corrupted, like a rotten wheel of monster that is taken out that was taken out of the cast too early. Imagine expelling it from your soul. I'm hungry. Same. <laughs> Let go of your negative thoughts. All other lesser cuisines have been vanished from your mind. We are reaching our inner camembert. Ah uh, yes, the one word you do know how to pronounce. Because of Miraculous Ladybug. Don't call me out like this. I'm going to call you out like this. Wow. <laughs> And suddenly, Mila was plagued from Miraculous Ladybug. No! <laughs> Everyone's inner camembert is different. For instance, mine is slightly flambéed. But a hint of Mediterranean spices and a delicious melt in your mouth center. Please stop. I don't like- I don't like Brie. I'm so hungry, please stop. <laughs> no, we must keep going. Uh. It reflects my spicy persona, but pays homage to my rich inner life and personality. There is no more negativity. There are no stressors in life. There is only the two of us and our inner camembert. Reach for it. Take a nibble. Doesn't it taste good? I don't like camembert. That's fair. That's fair. It's yes, a, it's reach very for acquired. that camembert. It's a very acquired mm -hmm. taste. Find your soul in the darkness, Len. Seize it. Feel it. 
taste of spiritual aura, aura on your third tongue. Namaste! <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't that require me to have a second tongue first? <laughs> it says that you don't. Wow. I don't want to go further oh, down that rabbit hole. <laughs> I can really feel the gauntlets of your soul, lad. Hmm. I almost feel like I need a cigarette. That wouldn't be very spiritually cleansing, though. Maybe I could smoke a stick of incense. I wouldn't recommend it. Have some weed instead. Go, go, Smoke go. weed every day. Go smoke some weed. Have an edible. <laughs> this entanglement of souls has left you both feeling spiritually heightened and also craving cheese. You gain two charm and one boldness. I do, in fact, crave cheese at this moment. The last day of summer is here. We finally get to see if we succeeded. <laughs> yeah. A new chapter begins. Uh, one by one, they'll all join my. Why did you choose the thing? Because that's who that's who you were with the entire time. One by one, oh. It's the it's the one you have the best chance of being with. Yeah. Mm. You finally gather the courage to ask your beloved to watch the meteor shower with you. Two of us, the summer fling. Oh no, I can't. Damn it. You see, I know when you're going to die, and every day, then that day would be like a big thing for me. And I'm determined that I already have plans oh, for that day. Wow. So, wow. I'm very sorry, but I have to pass this time. Bye! Oh, but I thought I did well. How humiliating. This scars you for life. To distract yourself from the pain, you get super into Thundercats. You write 1,000 plus pages of horny Thundercats fanfic. You Let's go. You the Thundercats themed furniture. You legally make Thundercats your middle name. Your life becomes like 5,000% more Thundercats. In the end, it turns out Thundercats can't fill the hole in your heart. I mean, they can't fill any of the holes in your body, unfortunately. <laughs> you finally gather the courage to ask your beloved to watch the video show with you. Us? A summer fling? Exciting! Is there like a badge for Daddy? Someone puny and sad? Let me check. No, there doesn't seem to be such a badge. Then I'll just pass. Oops. Wow! We both suck, Phoenix. How horrible. You name an impulse buying a parrot off Craigslist. You name your parrot Dad and try to teach you to say, I love you, Phoenix, so you can hear the voice for once in your life. However, wow! <laughs> however, oh my god. Fucking stupid fucking parrot. Alright, Lana, let's see if you had better wow. luck. Wow! <laughs> You desire a summer fling with me? Well, my summer research has indicated that summer romance is an integral part of having the perfect camp experience, and according to my diagnostic scan of all our fellow classmates, you are indeed the most desirable match by a 0.6% margin. In that case, I would love to be your fling. Uh oh. Yay! Yay! Good job, Lana. You're the only one that succeeded. Let's go! Me and my weird robot boyfriend! The last day of camp was delightful. You held hands with Calculester during the meteor shower. You wished for the two of you to be together forever. You told Calculester and, as and asked what he wished for. He told you he had a hard time understanding the basis for wishing when an asteroid passed within your sight. The logic of the ritual seemed very wrong. But while still holding hands, he added that if he had the capacity to make wishes, he also would have wished for you to be together. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Hey. <laughs> nice. Hey. Huzzah. Wow. That's a really long game, though. It is. It is, but it's fun. Before we knew it, those weeks were gone. It felt like a hot minute, and it felt like an entire li night lifetime. I can read. That night, as we saw our summer coming to an end, we all just wondered what would come next for us. It felt like the end of something big. Little did we know, life still had many wonders and misadventures in store for us. Now I'm older, and I can see it. How those years became the foundation of the mythology of our lives. Broken hearts turned tragedies sung for centuries. Wild nights became epic treasured, epics treasured forever. Every kiss and every laugh is now a constellation we'll always find while gazing into the starry night, no matter how many years go by. Wow, so deep. That was still... That was Monster Camp 2. That, that was Monster Prom 2, Monster Camp. There we go. Okay. Got I, there eventually. Listen, this I I'm tired now. <laughs> That's fair. That was fun, although I I wouldn't need more time for this game. Mm -hmm. That's fair. This is a very, fairly long game. 
But I'm glad you had fun. And yeah! And I watched, I watched some robot porn. That's important. You did! Odd brand things happen. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Very much. Very much so. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us, Lana. We had a lot of fun having yeah. you. Yeah! Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, we hope all the viewers at home had just as much fun with us. Mm -hmm. And yeah. <laughs> and yes. I don't know if I should just let the credits play out or if I should skip. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Whatever you prefer. I've actually These are really good animations. These are. I've actually never seen the end credits of the game because I always skip on them. <laughs> She's a tree. I, I I love this bimbo. Yes. She's great. <laughs> oh my god, were those intestines? Yes. We gave him the boomstick. Oh my god. It, it, it does have great music, though. What's happening? I like the graphics. This is a very well uh, made game. The art style mm -hmm. is very nice. Is this on Steam, though? Or where is it this? Is. Yeah, it's on Steam. Both, cool. uh, both games are, and I think they actually have a third game coming out at some point. Nice! It might, it might already be out. No, I don't think so. The, the, the demo is out. The demo is out. The, the, the demo is out, but the actual game is not out yet. I think... I, I, I don't know how to tell you this, Blue, but I think Calculus is getting off on that. <laughs> oh no, he definitely is. Is that bees? Yep, yep. Nice. not the bees! Not the bees! Yep, there's the toilet line. How to build your golem. Why, why is the book casting spells? For the vibes. For, yeah, I guess so. It's pretty cool. I read, I read beautiful bitch. <laughs> it's okay, we all did. God damn it! But the graphics are fucking great. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, again, hope you all enjoyed the video. Thanks again, Lana, for being here, and we will see. Thanks you for again. inviting me. It was, it was a pleasure, a distinct pleasure on my part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.